This program is a joint production of the Kimo Keo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowd-funded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at mauicauses.org. Hello, Kako Maui. Welcome to the Kimokeo Foundation Show. And uh, I'd like to thank Maui for the year 2018 and uh, the series that we had. And uh, we had a few things on the series, but uh, really appreciate that. We're coming up to the Kimokeo Foundation uh, two-year celebration, and uh, uh, you've seen what we've done uh, 16 and 17, and 2018 we worked on trying to uh, make sure that uh, land was available for us, and, and that's most exciting this recently that uh, we person to be working with is Mike Atherton with Waikapu Town uh, Development, and uh, so that's coming along really great, Mike Atherton and their company is granted uh, Kimokeo Foundation uh, five acres of land for Hawaiian Emergency School. So we're very excited about that, and uh, we uh, will be working with them on the included in their development. And so again, uh, Kimokeo Foundation would like to thank Mike Atherton, Waikapu Town Development for that. And as you know, the Kimokeo Foundation is about preserving, perpetuating, and educating Hawaiian culture. And we have taken um, Hawaiian language as uh, the key thing, and so we're, we're going to be working with the Hawaiian Immersion School, and uh, hopefully that uh, once um, they have land description on a property, subdivision, and working with the development, and coming to close um, in permit, and working with the County Planning Commission on this uh, next go around, and hopefully that will be in the first quarter. And uh, so again, mahalo Maui uh, for all of his support, and celebrating Kimo Kim Foundation on its second year in 2018 and moving on to our third year. I'm really uh, excited about it and today we have a special guest and I'd like to introduce our guest because uh, uh, we're always wondering what will happen for food sustainability and other sustainability. We have an interesting guest today and a very special guest, Steve Rose. Steve? Aloha. I'm from the Maui Hemp Institute for Research and Sustainability. Mm -hmm. Uh, my title is Chief Executive Hempster, and uh, we created the Institute about four and a half years ago here on Maui, and our goal is to facilitate the revision of the third wave of Hawaiian agriculture, leading the way with hemp. Well, that's great, and then this is the Maui Hemp Institute, Institute. and then the, the Maui Hemp Institute is a research and sustainability. So explain now, because you guys have uh, been working on it, even though it's been four years, but um, Hemp has been around for a long, long time, and uh, there's all kind of challenges to get where we at. So explain uh, in your research what you guys had to do, and then uh, we'll get to sustainability later. Well, hemp has been with the human race since the beginning. It was one of the first crops in ancient times that was harvested for food, fuel, uh, medicines, uh, clothing. There are thousands and thousands of use of hemp. Uh, hemp is a member of the cannabis family. Uh, its cousin, uh, used for recreational, medicinal purposes, contains THC. Hemp is the cultivar of the cannabis plant that has no THC, or 0.003. So hemp doesn't get you high. It's a very useful agricultural product, and we're excited about it coming back. Yeah, so when you talk about cousin of cannabis and THC, so the cousin you're talking about that everybody knows is called marijuana. Right. Is that correct? Yes. And so... Um, between uh, hemp and marijuana being a cousin, uh, we've had uh, a situation with that about being so closely related. And I think um, over the years, everybody knows about that, but uh, over the years, they didn't understand the process that we had to take uh, from where it is today and go backwards. And I think uh, you need to go back because uh, not many people, um, you know, and I just should say, I think everybody knows about cannabis and THC. But you know, in the local deal is a marijuana or pacololo, you know? So on, well, on the research, going back and to get to this point, what, explain to Well, a, a brief history was <laughs> hemp and cannabis was always used in part of civilization. It's mm -hmm. been traced back to Assyrian times. It's been used for medicinal purposes and food purposes throughout human history. Uh, 
being there are so many different things made of hemp, uh, paper and uh, fuel to start with. Mm -hmm. um, back in the 1930s, when Mr. DuPont uh, invented uh, nylon mm -hmm. and Mr. Hearst was printing all the newspapers in this country out of uh, basically trees, uh, he wanted to make sure the hemp got banned because hemp had been used for paper up until that time, hemp had been used for clothing. Um, so there was a movement and it was kind of very quiet. Uh, it was done by uh, the same gentleman who ran the basically the G-men. And after basically alcohol came back, he had nothing to do with all these G-men. So they mm -hmm. started on the campaign to basically ban marijuana. Mm -hmm. And that campaign, when they actually successfully achieved it, did not only ban marijuana, but it banned the whole plant, including hemp. So as of the 1930s, hemp, which has no THC in it to speak of, basically was a schedule one drug. It was actually scheduled higher than most of the opiates and things like that. And the schedule one basically made the federal government crack down and basically eliminated hemp farming in this country, except for a brief period in World War II when we needed hemp for our uh, Navy. They allowed us to grow hemp on Oahu for a short period of time and on the mainland, but that was only a brief history point in there. Yeah, so taking hemp now, um, you know, what you talked about from the historical way, uh, talk about the, 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 the way of Maui now. So here we are in Maui, so tell us mm -hmm. about, you know, um, Maui Hemp Institute. Well, we're really excited. Um, as of yesterday, our Congress passed the new farm bill, which should be signed into law next year. Uh, next month, next week, I'm sorry, flabbergasted, it's so exciting. Uh, once that's uh, signed and in law, hemp will become like corn. It's gonna go back to being an agricultural product. Mm -hmm. um, we've been waiting for hemp to come back to Maui because of the many, many uses it has and the, the way it can actually help our new agricultural processes mm -hmm. come into place. Um, we're starting to call it the third wave of Hawaiian agriculture led by hemp. Yeah, so let's go back to um, what you just said, that the House signed the bill, but the bill has to go to the president, right? Right. And the president has to sign that, right? And he should sign it. He's already agreed behind the scenes to sign so, it. So you, you feel confident that uh, the whole President Trump, Trump will sign that? Yeah, you'll see the fireworks coming over my house in Kihei on Wednesday when they on can Wednesday. sign. We've been waiting a long time, and it's going to allow us to actually move all our plans for the past couple of years forward, and we should have hemp in the ground. We're planning to do our first plantings on Maui during the long season in the beginning of March. Yeah, but that's a congressional uh, uh, part, right, uh, be between the House and Senate in Congress yeah. in Washington, D.C. So how does it translate to us now as a federal rule, federal law, coming to the state of Hawaii. Well, since hemp was a Schedule One drug, it meant if you wanted to plant it, you had to get clearance from the DEA mm -hmm. and other federal agencies, mm -hmm. which created a very complex permitting system, which we f took us four years in this state to put in place. Mm -hmm. And when it got into place, it really was not very supportive of our farmers planting hemp. Mm -hmm. All those rules will basically go out the door and we'll be back to a very simple process of just registering where we're gonna be planting the hemp, because again, it's gonna be like any other agricultural crop, and that'll allow us to begin our research. Yeah, well, when you farm. say simple process, so you know, like I said, if the president signs this, uh, this uh, bill and it goes uh, in, in to become a law, the simple process is that we on Maui can just um, next week Wednesday go out in the field and plant that, or we have to go and get a permit? Well, we're probably gonna need some state permitting put in place, which everybody's lined up ready to do, and that should not take very long to get in place, we're hopeful, um, which will basically just register where the hemp is being grown so when the feds will still be chasing after the marijuana so they'll know that the hemp is not marijuana, you know, it actually gets located on GPS yeah, yeah. maps. I don't think this is a related subject, but uh, uh, related to permit, you know, on, mm -hmm. on, on 2006, they made the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands, which is now Papahau Nomoko Aukea, uh, a national monument, and there was a uh, uh, thing that now you have to apply for a permit to enter <laughs> that waters for the national monument. Well, the language to me was, you're okay to go in it, but it was not so, Steve. Yeah. We had to apply for a permit that they did not have in place. It was a brand new process, and they didn't have an application in place. It was a makeshift between DLNR and uh, interesting uh, stakeholders how to go about that. It was really difficult. So when you say that uh, um, that permit uh, is to go into place, so it's not in place right now. It won't be. We're st until the law actually gets signed, everybody's kind of holding back. Uh, one of our sponsors, 
Ananda Hemp has lawyers in Washington that have been advising the Institute with the current status. They've actually helped put the law in place. Uh, Senator McConnell, uh, uh, who lives in Kentucky and where most of the hemp is being grown in his backyard by old tobacco farmers, has been kind of heading the movement. Um, so we should know in the next couple of weeks what it's going to take. Uh, we've spoken with uh, everybody, all the powers that be in the Senate and uh, the state Department of Ag, and it seems like they're going to work with us this time to really kind of move forward so we can get hemp in the ground pretty quick. Well, in uh, legislature, Representative Gabbard? Gabbard, Senator Gabbard. Was working actively with the Maui uh, Hemp Institute. Mm -hmm. And so is he still on board in working uh, with the Maui Hemp Institute? And do you still communicate with him or uh, with our legislatures in Oahu and understand that the uh, I guess because, you know, when you say permit, you know, the people don't mm -hmm. understand about, right. you know, when you're saying that the president signed it and fireworks are going to go out next Wednesday and people going out, mm -hmm. you know, as, as far as a layman's message giving to us that we're permitted to do that and then, you, then we have to go to the state permit, you know. So we're not actually going to be able to do anything for f until the state of Hawaii sets a permit process uh, for people to farm hemp. Is that correct? Correctly. And we've been, Senator Mike Gabbard is one of the hemp heroes, along with Cynthia Thalen, of, of Hawaii. They're the ones who actually have been pushing at the state level to basically support the hemp movement. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator Gabbard basically will be working with us as soon as this law gets passed. We'll know exactly what we have to get into the legislature in time. Uh, he's, we're working with him. We have people ready to write whatever needs to be written to be presented in time. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're very optimistic that the process is going to move smoothly. Uh, we're very lucky. Um, our uh, new mayor, Mike Victorino, is what we call a hempster. He's a pro-hemp guy. He's been to all our hemp events for the past four years, even, even when he was out of office. He's come up with some outrageous ideas for bringing hemp to the island. Uh, Kelly King on our council, she created the first hemp event here four or five years ago. So we have a, a local government that's pro-hemp. I've spoke, Great. spoken well, I to think, everybody. Um, I think uh, uh, things are in place now with what you're talking about, kind of what you say. And so now as a um, someone who's interested and excited about doing this hemp growing, you know, they're just waiting for your guys, uh, Maui uh, Hemp Institute to filter the process of permit between the state and locally and ready to go, you know? Exactly. And so now when you explain uh, the third Hawaiian generation of farmers, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, actually, I know you 19 years ago, Already. Correct. And when I first met you, uh, you invited me to a, an ava ceremony, and the kahuna talked about the third wave. Correct. The first wave were the, were the original Polynesians, the second wave were the Westerners that came. And the creation of the third wave is kind of us who actually live here, mm -hmm. you know, our young children, both uh, Hawaiian and, and others who've, who've settled here and call mm -hmm. this place home. And we've kind of banded together and created a new way of looking at things. Uh, uh, one of our farmers, uh, Kimo Simplicico, Simpliano, is basically on our ag committee. Mm. Um, he's created a whole new method using ancient Hawaiian methods, uh, biodynamics, Korean natural farming, and mixed it all together. And we've come up with a whole new way of growing our land, reverting our land from once monocropping to multi-cropping, where we can grow canoe plants, we can grow plants that can feed us. We've done a demonstration project before his farm on the west side burnt down, but we had enough plants in there that could basically uh, nutritionally feed an island. You know. But you're, you've been working with also a nonprofit uh, uh, here called Aloha Action. Mm -hmm. So can you explain about, because I guess um, trying to have Maui people to understand when you say uh, third Hawaiian generation farmers, because for us guys, you know, me especially, mm -hmm. you know, canoe plants, you know, Ulu, Kalo, uh, banana, you know, um, and Uala sweet potato is like canoe plant. You know, this is different on uh, what we had uh, from Okupuna now. We're going into a uh, hemp, you know. Well, I'll get to where the hemp fits in. Uh, Aloha in Action has been basically one of our biggest supporters over the years. 
Uh, Leohu Ryder and her partner Maydeen have supported us. Uh, matter of fact, they just supplied us with a new computer so we can keep going oh, a great. couple of weeks ago. Um, and they're basically spreading aloha and we're going to spread it through farming and food. Uh, we're looking basically, uh, some of the first plantings are going to be on Hawaiian homelands and Hawaiian owned land. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't think there's going to be a state permitting process on Hawaiian land, so we'll be able to actually start growing on Hawaiian land sooner than anywhere else. We have some models for the small farmers and how they can actually convert their lands into food and to mm -hmm. medicine, which will return a nice profit. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very enthusiastic about what's coming forward. Well, I just, I, I just, I, I think uh, Leo, Leo Ryder has uh, a really, um, um, knowing, uh, you know, knowing her family, they, they farm a lot, you know, mm -hmm. especially her brother, Kovehi Ryder, <laughs> right. who I know that farms a lot, and he has a green thumb for anything that you're talking Hawaiian stuff, and uh, he's really an amazing individual, and I know Leo herself, so I just wanted to understand that, you know, when we say third Hawaiian wave, that you have Hawaiian people on board and uh, making sure that uh, that's happening because I think Leo will be really active with you with Aloha Action and you, you were involved with the research, you know. So on your, on your research, uh, speak about details in your research. When you talk research about, the, you, the, I know that um, people were permitted to do research by law, not to farm by law. So explain about the seed that was researched by law, and where did the research go, and what did it? What, what was the end result? We never get to really get some end results. You know, it's just uh, you have the beginning part <laughs> that oh, now we can do it only for research reasons, but we couldn't do it for farming reasons. But we we surpassed that now. But in the research, what did come out of you guys' research? Well, hemp will grow on Maui was the first thing, which we kind of knew going in there, but that was part of the state research program. Is can it grow? Uh, they were questioning whether whether it gets grown, if it converts and puts out more THC, it becomes marijuana, mm -hmm. which we knew was not going to happen, and now mm -hmm. that's been proven by tests on the actual car crop that was harvested. It's going to take many generations of that to, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, what's come out of that is our first research study, which we hope to begin early next year. Uh, one of the biggest problems we had in even putting in the research crop, and what our farmer's biggest problem on this island is, is wind. Uh, you can't grow things on this island because the wind will literally blow it away. Uh, there is a cultivar of hemp, which is a type of hemp. Cultivars are like tomatoes. You have beefsteak tomatoes and cherry tomatoes, all kinds of tomatoes. We have all kinds of cultivars of hemp. Some are for windbreaks, some are for food, some are for fuel, some are for housing. So each of the cultivars grows differently, has different characteristics. And there's one cultivar of hemp that will grow about 12 feet in eight weeks and it looks more like bamboo than marijuana. It's very thick, and we're very optimistic. It's been used in Australia as a windbreak. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a major company that's gonna be supporting our first research study with some of our farmers. So we're gonna get some hemp in the ground and see if it actually right. works as a windbreak. So you, you talked about that particular hemp for um, windbreak, right? Mm -hmm. So they have several uh, variety of hemp. You talked about uh, like the variety of tomato, you know, mm -hmm. and versus hemp. So. Uh, that particular hemp you're talking about, is that uh, uh, a product that can be multiple use for the windbreak? Windbreak, and you could use it for um, making like a hemp creek, or you can use it for hemp seed. Or So hemp has a variety of, of usage of them. So we went from a research, on your research, what kind of hemp you think that would end up on Maui besides what you say is a windbreak? Well, we're gonna grow all the types here, but we're starting with the windbreak. And the mm -hmm. windbreak, 100% of the plant is usable. From the roots, every part is usable. Mm -hmm. um, the windbreak material will basically give us a short fiber. Uh, mm -hmm. That short fiber, and I got some example. This is actually a piece of hemp mm -hmm. that was grown on Oahu in 214. This legal? This, this, well, it was under the research studies. It was a legal piece of hemp. Uh, you can see how thick and strong it is. And inside there is a a single, some single fibers which are used for cloth and fabric, the high-end fibers, and lots of pieces that break off. Now when those pieces are run through the proper machine, we wind up with something like this. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the first products we hope to produce here on Maui. This basically replaces our black agricultural mm -hmm. plastic. So when a farmer goes into plant, he can actually put his seeds through it, it gets watered, and it biodegrades oh, into great. the form. So you know when you talk about research, you got that piece of uh, hemp from Oahu. Mm -hmm. So um, what about Maui? Were we, uh, we were allowed to do research or just Oahu? It was mostly UH and Oahu that did okay. the research. Most of the research 
you know, as far as we were concerned, really wasn't relevant to what our needs are here on Maui. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of just kind of let that happen and walked from the sidelines. We have a very different plan here for Maui, what we want yeah, to I've, do. Yeah, I have my favorite thing about just Maui, so I, I want the people to know that uh, we didn't do any research to come up with a product, you know? Right. And it was just Oahu. Right. And it's always pretty common that um, Oahu gets to do something and I wonder why we uh, wasn't able to do it at University of Hawaii Maui. The one thing we did do is we did have a research project here that was actually a company in Colorado got the permit. Uh, but lucky a Maui boy was the man who was the farmer. So we arranged for the initial planting was actually done on the full moon back in June uh, with a special uh, pule written by Lehu Ryder, a special blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, the farmers and a few other Hawaiian kapuna were there. And we actually planted the first hemp in a very proper Hawaiian ceremony. One of the things the Institute wants to do is do things right the first time. And mm -hmm. uh, our basic in building is that, you know, we respect the aina, we respect the land. Mm -hmm. You know, most of us involved in the Institute really just want a house to live in and grow food and be here. You know, we, we're not really aiming to get rich, although a lot of money will be made in hemp. Our goal is to solve a lot of problems on the islands by using this plant. So you uh, spoke of Kelly King, and so uh, congratulations again to Kelly King uh, winning uh, her election, you know, um, and uh, uh, being a um, council woman for South Maui. And so I know of her and work with uh, her and Bob a little bit on the sunflower, which is food, fuel, feed, and facial. And you're saying that hemp does, uh, um, does it does, uh, does all of that, or it does a different? It does all of that, and even better. I mean, Bob and Kelly and Pacific Bio wanted to plant hemp five years ago and ran into all the regulations and problems, so that's why Kelly kind of formed the first, uh, it was called Hemp is Hope. Mm -hmm. It was our first gathering of all the, we call them hempsters on Maui, and we began our mm -hmm. hemp movement back about five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, the permitting process that they were put through uh, kind of led them to uh, the other crop, which is sunflower. But we're pretty sure that once the hemp uh, starts to get planted, a lot of those sunflower seeds will start to get mixed with hemp. Uh, one of the nice things about hemp oil is it doesn't go rancid. So when you harvest hemp and squeeze the seeds for oil and mix that oil with sunflower oil or other oils that would turn rancid, it actually stabilizes them. So as an additive to making other types of food oils and cosmetic oils, it's a very important ingredient. So hemp would complement yeah. any out of the oil that you put additive to that. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so, because uh, uh, the sunflower was, I think, a successful plant, mm -hmm. um, and their um, maturity on harvesting is uh, 90 days. Yeah. And so, where where does hemp uh, in your research uh, mature date to well, harvest hemp? We we really think we can get three crops a year in. We're not sure. Again, we haven't grown three crops here, but that first crop really was ready to go within two and a half months mm -hmm. as far as, you know, for the cultivar that was planted. So we're very optimistic on three crops, maybe four. That's why everybody in the hemp world is looking at Maui, because as far as research, if you're developing a new cultivar, you need to have many generations. And in Colorado, you have to, oh, you get one generation a year. We can get three generations a year here. We have 30 some odd microclimates. So as far as research, in various microclimates with various cultivars, Maui could become a leader in that kind of research to develop new strains that are more uh, adaptable to different environments, especially here on Maui where we have so many different environments. But like our Kalo farmer, you know, and uh, all our Kalo farmers uh, uh, wanting to get water and uh, making sure that they have enough water for doing what they're doing, and and they, um, we had the Nava Eha case, and we have the other case in Wailua that's going on, and both cases have been successful and are still gaining momentum of uh, what they're about to do. So where is hemp going to get their water from? Well, it's, it's part of the mix. I mean, that's why we're saying hemp is part of the beginning of third wave Hawaiian agriculture. Um, when a farmer is going to go into a piece of soil that hasn't been farmed in many years or one that's been monocropped, mm -hmm. uh, the first problem is there's a lot of stuff left in the soil, heavy metals, poisons, who knows what was used, uh, pages of things that were put into some of our fields. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing hemp does is it sends down a very deep taproot and it pulls up these heavy metals mm -hmm. and pulls a lot of these pollutants out of the soil. 
and then basically it's called sequestering, but it holds onto it within the plant itself. Mm -hmm. So if the, we put the hemp in first, it'll pull the heavy metals out, pull a lot of the poisons, and also breaks up the soil very deeply. Uh, then when that hemp is harvested, other crops can be put in, and then the, the, the beginning of bringing back the soil to grow food uh, is underway. So Hemp Maui uh, Institute um, uh, research shows that they'll take out, um, you said metal, Mm -hmm. But you didn't refer to polyethylene or plastic or anything well, like that. Well, that's this. unfortunately stuck in the ground. That's going to be a manual process. And the hope is with the hemp matting, we won't have to put more in the ground. When you say manual process versus, um, but you said that the hemp will take out the metal. Why, yeah. why won't the hemp root take out the plastic? Because it's not broken down enough. It's just too big. A, there is the heavy metals are, are actually almost in microscopic. Oh, you're you know, talking about forms. microscopic yeah, metal. Yeah, yeah, and Not not any pieces of metal, but you oh. know, basically when they put a lot of amendments on the soils back in the 1800s, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them had lead in it. So there's lead and other things oh, okay, in the okay. ground. I, I understand. These will be sucked so these, up these by are, that. These are these are different. I'm, you know, I'm assuming like a car metal. No, no. I'm looking like yeah. at a refrigerator metal. You know, yeah. so I, I that's I, still I think, manual labor. I, I, <laughs> Lots so I think, of I, think labor. You know, I just wanted everybody to understand, yeah. Steve, that yeah. you know when we talk of metal, you're talking about <laughs> uh, uh, something else that uh, you know that's uh, chemically uh, exactly deal versus exactly. that. So. So and we, we actually are going to be funded by a major U.S. corporation that's very big in the hemp industry to do some of these studies, start the windbreak studies, start the soil remediation studies. And these companies are coming here and they're basically employing our local farmers, empowering the institute, and basically just want to share the research. They're really not coming to Yeah, so anyway, us. I think that um, I think the research was one of the things I wanted to talk about, you mm -hmm. know and uh, how far you guys researched and what you guys did and when you talk about uh, research, uh, because there's other countries in the world that's producing um, hemp and has done really successful with that. So have you guys worked with uh, or know of research that's been done in different countries and how it applies to Maui? Because you said some places just do a, get a crop a year mm -hmm. and versus we're gonna get three crops a year and then they wanna come here and what, what makes that we're gonna do three crops and they only do one crop? Well. We've done a lot of basic research. You know, we're still a very small organization. Been uh, myself and a few volunteers. We've increased our numbers quite rapidly, very recently, as we're getting closer. So we have we've done research on what research has to be done. Let's put it yeah. like that. So we have a plan of what we need to do. We're looking for funding. We'll be starting a crowdfunding next week. We have a website for membership. As we put the funds together, we'll actually launch some of these research projects. Uh, we're gonna be working with universities around the world. Uh, the Maui Hemp Institute, even though we're a small organization here, has gained worldwide recognition like anything Maui. Everybody's looking at us. They all wanna come here and work with us. Well, I think that's great that what you guys have done uh, with research and uh, uh, Maui Hemp Institute, and uh, regardless of what you say, that you know your group is small and uh, everything else, that, but Maui's always been a special place, you know? and uh, draw some special things to the island here. But uh, even at what work you guys have, so I think that uh, congratulations goes to you and uh, the Maui uh, Hemp Institute uh, Ohana, which includes a whole understand uh, people behind there and the machine that makes it possible. You know, so congratulations on, Thank you. on your research. Thank you. And we are in Ohana. We've actually taken the Ohana model in putting our institute together. We have members that are part of committees. Our committees have committee chairs. They meet in council. We have an executive council, and then we have a bunch of kapuna that basically kind of look over everything and tell the young folk what they can't do, but we're really trying to become a very youth-driven organization. We want the, the future of this island to run this organization. Well, awesome. I think that um, you guys have taken a structure from a kapuna level down mm -hmm. to the makua level, and now taking it into the future. So. I think that uh, really exciting of a uh, new uh, product uh, in our farming industry, Maui Hemp Institute. We're going to take a little break. This program is a joint production of the Kimo Keo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowdfunded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at MauiCauses.org. 
Steve, we uh, talked about uh, research, and I, I, I want to go back to uh, what you call about Maui Hemp Institute Research and Sustainability, you know, because there's a, a big difference about uh, making people understand that you guys are doing research and sustainability, and you actually want to have other people that farm the product, and you're just helping them to uh, understand the product and what uh, market is out there for them, you know? So let's go to sustainability. So talking about sustainability uh, on hemp, so tell us about the sustainability and uh, the type of things that uh, hemp can be made of to sustain the farmer economically to want to produce um, hemp on Maui. Well, we have two, two parts to it. One is the farming part where the windbreak goes in, the soil gets remediated through many different methods. We like to call it the third wave of Hawaiian agriculture. It's a new design to actually bring our soil back. And then we start to grow basically our food forests, which is all the Hawaiian canoe crops, and I call them airplane crops, uh, the Molokai potatoes and the things that came afterwards. Uh, hemp is one of the airplane crops. Uh, mm -hmm. What hemp adds to the food mix on the island is very important because hemp basically is very high in protein. It's the highest source of protein of any plant, and it's also very high in omega-3, 6, and 9, which is essential for human skin. Uh, a lot of people take their omegas through fish oil, but you gotta take three to five times the amount of fish oil as you do hemp oil, because mm -hmm. hemp has the 6 and 9, which allows the body to absorb it. So as a food ingredient, it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, during our Hemp History Week, which we run every year, uh, we've done a hemp beer, which mm -hmm. Maui Brewing Company is working on. We hope to have a canned hemp beer in the future with Maui Brewing Company. Uh, they're supporting the Institute. Uh, they have a contract out right now for 2,000 pounds of organic hemp seed. So we're working on the route to get the land organic and grow those 2,000 pounds so they can make the beer, but we already have customers for the food aspect of it. Uh, John Cadman with Pono Pies, he can't wait to add the hemp to his Pono Pies because hemp and ulu, or uh, callow and ulu and hemp and uh, moringa, which is another airplane crop that we're growing, which is very high in vitamin C nutrition, those four crops are nutritionally complete. Mm -hmm. If you make them into flour and make pancakes out of them, you can live off of those. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have crops now that we can grow here in large quantity, hemp being the last one, having the protein to it, that can literally nutritionally feed our island. Now, it's not cornflakes and milk. You'll have to have pancakes and simple, simple little koi syrup on it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we are devising ways that we can feed our island using the canoe crops and adding the few other crops we need to it. Uh, and the other part of it, too, is that a lot of our farmers, you know, hemp is a very valuable crop when grown for medicine. So part of the mix is growing some of the hemp for medicine. Uh, the value out of a medicine crop could literally pay all the farmer's bills and he can grow the taro just to feed his people and not have to pay his farm bills with the taro. He can pay it with the hemp medicine money. So that's another aspect that's, that's being added into so the I mix. See, I see hemp being a really uh, sustainable product, but you know, again, I see hemp is a challenging thing for some of the structure, you know, land, water, uh, infrastructure, you know, um, I know that uh, some of the farmers are paying just for irrigation mm -hmm. on like a callo, uh, $3,000 for a drip system for callo, you know? And, uh, and, and, and I think that between that, they have to uh, look at um, what you're talking about, geologically the soil, you know, when you say uh, remediation, of making sure the soil is, uh, you know, a nutrient or ready to do that. Uh, even in remediation, there's remediation in old style of, of, of not old style, but color growing, you know, mm -hmm. where they, they use the, some of the grass to put back in the color patch wet, and then when the grass turns like almost back to soil, then it's kind of ready for plant. So right. when you talk remediation or geologically of the soil, you know, so how long that would that take before we get uh, a hemp product out? Or you don't need any remediation of the soil, you'd be able to just do it right away if you did have. So I, I guess I, I, I'm trying to understand that for us to get to the value of uh, the uh, product of hemp to uh, make a living on that, you know, and so where, where do we stand between now and then? Well, that's the first test we have to run from the Research Institute. I, I mean, our, our first plan test will be to test the soil remediation 
before and after, see what's in the soil, see if the hemp takes it out, see what else we may have to do. Uh, those tests will be the first project we will put in the ground in March. Mm -hmm. uh, but the real exciting part about sustainability, um, I had lunch with our new mayor, Mike Victorino, a few months ago before the and he election. And he said he's going to... I'll make sure that Portuguese sausage and cabbage and carrots <laughs> with Portuguese uh, stay around. No, well, no, I'm just joking. I hear you, I hear you. But he came up, he out-hemped me, and as a hempster oh, that's great. for 50 years, he came up with this idea. You know, I was complaining about the streets being torn up for the R2 water, which mm -hmm. is the effluent out of our wastewater treatment power. We water golf courses with it, and we don't want to put it in injection wells. It, it still has heavy metals in it, cosmetics, all kinds of things in it. So Mike came up with the idea, and we're hoping to really get some traction on this as soon as he gets into office. Uh, right behind the Kihei wastewater treatment plant is 150 acres of ag land owned by the county. So the plan is to take the water from the treatment plant, run it up to this dry ag land, and we probably get some federal support because it is sewer water, uh, and grow hemp on that land. The hemp will clean up the soil because it's dry land that hasn't been used. Awesome. It should clean up the water, yeah. so when the water gets into the aquifer, it'll be clean. And then he wants to take that hemp and build houses with it. Hemp makes something very interesting called hempcrete, uh, which when they added to lime and the hemp fiber is, is stronger than concrete, mm -hmm. is mold and mildew resistant, fireproof if it's done right, mm -hmm. and an incredible product. Um, 100 acres of hemp can build three three-bedroom houses, we're told. So we have to figure out those numbers, but with three crops a year, uh, we have a lot of acres. So the idea is to harvest that hemp and start building our homes out of hempcrete. Yeah, so going back about um, other countries and uh, uh, some of the research you guys do, mm -hmm. because I, um, you guys are using some, I hope that you're using some of their uh, studies on what's going on with them, because I understand hemp is uh, creek uh, in Canada, hemp creek in Australia, and uh, I have a close friend that uh, paddles canoe with me. Uh, one is George Rixey, mm -hmm. and the other one is Joy Nelson. And uh, my understanding that George Rixey went to a hemp uh, creek school to understand how to construct a hemp creek house. And mm -hmm. they actually, uh, Don and Joy, uh, built a hemp creek house in Kihei. And I think you guys, we had dinner there one night right. with uh, Representative Gabbard, mm -hmm. and uh, to show all the product that uh, we ate a whole hemp dinner. Seven courses with Seven hemp course beer. dinner, <laughs> you know, and plus hemp beer. Yeah. So it was amazing of all the product, you know, we had mm -hmm. that night. But uh, um, they already had built a two homes here with Hemp Creek, and, and so, and um, they got the Hemp Creek from another country, you know, mm -hmm. and looks like uh, everything was uh, built except the top the roof, I think the walls are Right, built. well their house was unique because it was a custom house <coughs> and Hempcrete, you know, to meet all the building codes and everything, they had to actually redesign the house where the roof floats off of beams from the basement. I mean, it was a beautiful house. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it's a custom house, very expensive. We'd like to create a house that we can mass produce. Mm -hmm. So when we start building these first hempcrete houses, we're gonna get the county involved, the unions involved, and get our permitting from day one. So when mm -hmm. we get the first house done, we can build hundreds. Mm -hmm. We have workshops that we're planning for next year for builders, for farmers. We'll be doing a lot of workshops next year through the Institute to educate them. We have people from Europe ready to come here as soon as I can raise the funds and teach us mm -hmm. all they know. They can't wait to come to Maui, especially during the winter, and run workshops for us. Yeah, so, so going back to the custom house and a regular house, you know? Mm -hmm. So on the, I, I think that um, you guys were gonna do a little project, you know, like a tiny house with the hemp. I, I don't think you got off with the project yet, but I think no, I... No, we're going to do a full house, a three, full house. three bedrooms. Uh, there's two ways you can build a house with hempcrete, uh, which is the broken fiber. You can pack it into molds, so I call it the Lego method. You can go, like buy a le you go buy a Lego set, you build a house out of Lego, and then you take each of those blocks and you cast mm -hmm. them in hempcrete, and then you stack them, and you have a house, you put a solar roof on it, like a Tesla roof with batteries, all you have to do is run water in, and it's ready to go. Well, I'm really excited about the sustainability and the amount of products that you get. About We have a few products here, so mm -hmm. can you explain some of the products that we have? Because first, you, you know, a lot of these products we already used at the dinner mm -hmm. night, you know? But I think it's uh, some might be new to the Maui people and uh, 
and uh, mm -hmm. well, maybe not, but can you explain this, to them what we have? This is hemp seed, you know, which is very common. This is the seed from the plant. It's mm -hmm. shelled, and this is high in protein, omega-3s. Uh, this is a co-op on the mainland, which we hope to help. One of the pr things the Institute hopes to do is be the big guy on the block to be able to get our small farmers, create the co-op, bring in the funding so we can have a Maui-made hemp seed, which we know will sell all over so the world. So you said omega-3, omega-6, omega-9 yeah. in, in your conversation? So that's out of the hemp seed. That's out of the hemp seed. Different plant or the same plant. Same plant. Yeah. Same so plant. One plant it does all the omegas, which is three, six, and nine. And then it also is very high in protein, and it also has a lot of other nutritional benefits. Yeah. Just recently, seed. I was at a fundraiser at Nalo's in Kihei for Pacific mm -hmm. Cancer Foundation, mm -hmm. and there was uh, a broker, a fisher broker, that donated a few hundred pounds of salmon, and that was about omega three. Yeah. And then you, you in your conversation said that. Hemp seed or hemp has more omega than uh, just fish oil. Well, the thing is that for the body, uh, salmon is very high in omega-3. Correct. However, for the body to use the omega-3, it needs the six and nine in a ratio, okay? And that ratio of six and nine is in the hemp seed, it's not in the salmon. I see. So having the six and nine means you don't need as much, there is, you take a little bit of hemp oil has as much omega-3 effectiveness on the body than a couple of capsules of salmon fish oil, and we're not harvesting salmon for oil, we can use salmon for other things. So the, that benefit alone is one of the biggest benefits out of hemp, and also the protein benefit. A lot of people are getting away from eating meat and other protein sources, dairy protein is, too expensive on this island mm -hmm. and nothing we want to do. So hemp protein uh, is basically going to be our main protein source over the next few years. So I, I see the package of hemp there. So I know that um, we already have hemp product on the island because mm -hmm. I bought myself a hemp shirt in Paia, one of the shops, right. the clothing shop. So um, as we speak about hemp, about research and sustainability, mm -hmm. already hemp is here, like the house that George, George right. Rixie built for uh, Joy and Don Nelson out of Kihei. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, uh, so now we have shirt, we have seed. So uh, I think that Down to Earth and other places have hemp products, yeah? Very few. Very few. And, and a lot of them are coming from the mainland and the price is very expensive to ship them in. So we're, one of the things we're very confident about is once we have local source of hemp, mm -hmm. that hemp seed, hemp oil can be added to a lot of our food products. Uh, a lot of our small manufacturers can benefit from that. Uh, we have millions of tourists that would love to have hemp in their food, and you know, especially Maui hemp. So having the local seed will actually help all our value-added producers with hemp products uh, that they can add to it. Uh, you know, and we, there's technologies we'd love to kind of look into. You know, uh, making hemp cloth is very expensive. However, the Hawaiians have been making tapa cloth forever. No one's ever taken hemp and used tapa methods to make cloth. So that's something we'd like to explore. Well, I, I like that. I, I like the idea about um, you know Maui farmers and that uh, we locally grow our own stuff and uh, supply our own people. You know, uh, Bobby Paya is a real great friend of mine, and uh, mm -hmm. he's up in Waikapu and he's doing kalo and he's doing banana, he's doing puhole and he's doing sweet potato. Uh, there's a lot of other products that he's working with up there with the amount of acreages they have up mm -hmm. there included in that um, whole triangle you have right. um, uh, Pacific Biodiesel, Bob King and then you have other farmers where uh, now have the pigs been growing over there, the organic mm -hmm. pigs you know because uh, we cannot ship in pigs so a lot of that what you guys are doing is exciting so we don't have to ship it in that we can produce no. our own stuff for our own family here. And, and one thing we've lost is eggs on this island because importing seed and uh, chicken food is too expensive. So most of our egg, local egg production has ceased. We used to have egg at my farmer's market, it doesn't exist. Hemp seed is the best food to feed to chickens. Mm -hmm. So part of our plan is after the hemp crop is harvested to have chickens in mobile cages that will eat the hemp seed, we will then have high omega-3 eggs and high omega-3 chickens. And we'll actually recreate our egg industry on this island. It'll be totally Well, local. we have a lot of chickens all over this island now. They don't make eggs. <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't make eggs. <laughs> so maybe you gotta get those hemp seeds out so they can make eggs yeah. for us, you know. Yeah. But uh, all joking aside, I think it's exciting that uh, hemp is a, a new uh, industry and Maui Hemp Institute to um, bring research and bring study to um, encourage uh, farmers uh, uh, to do that and, mm -hmm. uh, and hope that uh, I know that um, ACNS uh, has always been a thing to talk about Hawaii Company Sugar, about their land. 
And I know that Maui Cattlemen Association have a partnership with them, and they're doing cattle, and they're doing several other things, you know. Uh, so has uh, Maui uh, Institute, uh, Maui Hemp Institute, have discussions with them about land availability and water availability? They've been pretty unreachable from a lot of our small farmers' perspective and our perspective. Um, and we've identified enough land and enough places to start without them at the moment. Mm -hmm. We're sure once we get these demonstration models out, we know the profitability of hemp. We know the hemp's role in all these things. Mm -hmm. um, we, I don't see them not planting hemp there once those any projects get going on those mm -hmm. acreage. Uh, the research off the mainland and what's being done in Colorado and Oregon shows that you know hemp is a valuable crop either as a precursor to agriculture, as part of agriculture, or unto itself for growing medicine and like I said housing and food so that land will have hemp on it uh, it's you know we're kind of also waiting for, for them to get engaged with us you know we're mm -hmm. focusing on our research we're a small institute right now uh, and we really want to work with the small farmers I mean we're really mm -hmm. you know we're working with people who live here we live here all our people are engaged living here you know we have small farms you know what happens is a big concern to the central valley and the hcns lands mm -hmm. but i'm more concerned about my friends who are farmers who are losing their farm or my farmers who can't find a farm and be able to make money off of their farm and getting them engaged mm -hmm. we need to get our youth going we work closely with the hawaii farmers union uh, they have a training program we're hoping to offer hemp growing as part of their mm -hmm. training program next year um, and raise engage our farmers you know uh, the vision of the Institute was kind of be the big guy on the block uh, made up of all us small people so well, that's great I think that um, uh, right now we have a lot of uh, what you call farmers that's doing things and are getting really successful um, again referring to um, you know Bobby Paia and uh, hello uh, farm mm -hmm. working with um, the Lahaina uh, Luau, right. you know, and the stores, and I know that there are other farmers working, the micro farmers in Hana working with all the restaurants and mm -hmm. all the local restaurants and hotels are supporting our local farmers, you know, and so I think there's a cohesiveness between that, and I think that um, hemp would be a portion of that mix, you know. Uh, you say that it will produce in all these products that they can use. I like the idea that we don't need to um, use uh, plastic in the future. Yeah. And uh, this would be biodegradable because I've seen the coconut um, kind of biodegradable map, and, mm -hmm. uh, and this would be a nice map to have. And yeah. uh, I think, like every product, you know, price would be uh, a determination of what product they use and how to get it. So, you know, this would this is available now, and I hope people are using it from other places, and hopefully they get to buy it from our own people. Yeah, and once we can prove that, prove pr make that here, it's probably going to cost cheaper than the shipping of the black plastic. You know, uh -huh. We haven't gotten all the numbers yet, but we're very optimistic that this is one of so the So now you products. got uh, Maui Hemp uh, Institute Research and Sustainability, and you have the president that's about to send, sign the, the, the bill mm -hmm. and make it into law. So what's your guys' next step, Maui uh, Institute? Well, our next step, we're already underway. We're planning, we're gonna plan the windbreak project. We've gotten funding for it from uh, a company. I'm not ready to announce that all yet. We will in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. Everybody's waiting for the farm bill to be in place and signed mm -hmm. and passed. But we have funding from a major Compa worldwide company that's going to support our windbreak and our soil remediation projects. We have another company that wants to come in and work with uh, Native Hawaiian groups and help them develop a, a hemp industry and a hemp community. We have a big mm -hmm. project that's on the boards uh, to basically create a whole hemp agricultural community on Hawaiian homeland. Uh, we want to get started with uh, the government here and get the housing project and the water cleaning project together. Uh, and also begin the educational process for our farmers uh, so we can get hemp seed in here. We've also started a program to identify what seeds can be grown here, developing you know, our own seeds that we don't have to import is very important. So the Institute has begun the preliminary research on that, working with some of our uh, marijuana growers who are now moving into growing hemp. Uh, the, what used to be a valuable THC product called marijuana is now not as valuable as a high hemp CBD product. And it's basically the same plant, it's just different output of the plant. So that's uh, pretty unique that uh, marijuana was uh, a competition and now they're trying to complement each other. 
They and, always and, did. And then now um, you're saying that the marijuana growers, so we have marijuana growers with license, right, and yeah. permit. Yeah. So how many, we have only one or two growers on this island, right? Well, no, we have, basically, if you have a medical card, you can grow 10 plants. So right. we have medical grows where people have gotten together, put the greenhouse together. Um, 10 people can grow 100 plants in one spot. Pretty smart. And share it. So, oh, so we you're have, talking about those we have groups them, that would take 10 people who has a license for 10 plants to put 100 plants together. Exactly, and they're growing CBDs, which is the hottest thing on the uh, CBDs did not exist in our vocabulary four years ago. Last year it was a half a, bi a, half a billion dollar business uh, projected to be $20 billion. So you're talking about the properties extracted oil from the marijuana plant. Right, right, and, and the and CBD so is one of them. And we can grow those CBDs, and especially once hemp becomes legal. Within the, within the hemp plant. Yeah. And so that can be extracted to be part of that industry. Yeah, well basically it's, it's part of the medicine industry. Mm -hmm. uh, the two, they call them cannabinoids, there's over 100 in the mm -hmm. cannabis plant, okay? One of them's THC, one is CBD. Those mm -hmm. are the two most popular medicines. Right. Uh, the CBD medicine is, once hemp is made legal, okay, with the farm bill, is totally legal to grow. So we will start growing CBDs in larger quantity. We have a model where basically a farmer could put up a greenhouse, you know, put in his plants there and grow medicine, CBD medicine, and that profit alone would pay all the bills on the farm. So we're looking at that model to introduce to our small farmers. Well, that's super exciting when you can say the profit will pay the bills on the farm because every farmer wants to do that. You got it. And everybody is struggling to do that or mm -hmm. want to do that. I, I guess I go back to my uh, question to you. So there are permitted people that doing uh, the marijuana uh, permit that mm -hmm. allows them to do that. So there's only several permits were allowed on this island, right? They have two permits. I that Well, that was, that was, those permits had to do with the state plan uh, for growing hemp, and that program is basically over with, and and, and there's no research oh, yeah. at that level but I'm, I'm referring to the marijuana permit yeah. people. Those are basically people who are growing under their medical cards, so, um, yeah, so and that's anybody. So, no, no, but there is, a, remember there's a state that gave permit for people to grow up to uh, certain thousand square feet of marijuana plant in a nursery, and they're using it for medicinal use. Well, that's just that's just our dispensary here. That's Dispen okay, I'll yeah. go back. So they mean maybe yeah. the dispensary people. Yeah. So is the dispensary people um, going into the hemp business? You think, or no, just doing dispensary? Well, work? they are in the hemp business because they are producing CBD extracts and selling them at the dispensary. So they are, you know, it's it's all cannabis. It's called okay. marijuana. It's called hemp. It's called a lot of things. Okay. Mm -hmm. The cannabis that's high in THC is one medicine. The cannabis that's high in CBD okay. is another medicine. Uh, the dispensary is producing all of those and everything in between. But we also have a lot of locals now starting mm -hmm. to grow the CBDs because mm -hmm. it's legal, you know, and those CBDs are being made into products. We actually have four or five companies now producing mm -hmm. CBD medicines locally on Maui. Oh, cool. Um, you know, and they're starting to get into the medicinal field and we're looking to you know, move that forward, and a lot of them are doing a lot of research. You know, we, we believe we have some answers that other people are looking for. We're not ready to share them yet, but our growers, mm -hmm. you know, have been looking into CBDs now. Uh, most of, most well, of you're, you're saying that you don't want to share that, but we, we're looking at, um, um, in this um, Maui Hemp Institute, working with local farmers or small farmers that to communicate together and work together. Is exactly. That Exactly. And we're then, sharing, and, and, we're oh. sharing amongst ourselves. We're not letting it out to the world yet. Oh, I see. We, I see. It, we're a very Maui-centric organization. We believe if we do it here on Maui, the rest of the world will see it and adopt it. But our institute has been focused on Maui. We're all, all Maui people. We really want it to happen on Maui first. Well, I think that's exciting that uh, Maui Hemp Institute uh, done the research and uh, talk about sustainability. And uh, I looked at uh, Maui Hemp Research, uh, hemp, Maui Hemp Institute, adding economics to the local farmers. So it's mm -hmm. really exciting that you can do that, you know, and uh, making sure that uh, we don't, and the most exciting thing is just it's uh, eco, you know, ecosystem, health, mm -hmm. self-health, you know, taking care of the land and making sure that we don't go to the landfill. Exactly. So I think the product you're saying this is, we don't go to the landfill, you know, at all. It, it all stays there. You can even make plastic. Everything that's made with oil can be made with hemp. Plastics, fuel, 
Ford built a car out of hemp. There's actually Jay Leno had a feature on a hemp car. We're making surfboards out of hemp. Hemp is used in high-tech batteries now. It's even used in rocket fuel. So hemp has thousands and thousands of uses which are just now beginning to be explored and come online now that the, the band is being lifted. And a lot of that will affect our local right. economy. I'm, I'm really happy about uh, uh, what you guys found is uh, Maui Hemp Institute and really happy you're working with the third with Hawaiian generation. But I I'm, I'm, uh, wanna just say in, in closing that, uh, you know, that uh, the hemp industry uh, don't forget uh, the the Hawaiian basic uh, taro and banana and ulu and sweet potato. It's uh, all part they, of the they, mix. Their it's, canoe plants. So yeah. hopefully that uh, hemp can uh, be a fertilizer or some kind of complement to mm -hmm. our uh, Hawaiian uh, plants and Hawaiian farmers. You know, and uh, I know that uh, you guys will be working with the community and working with the local farmers and. Uh, it's really exciting that uh, you guys um, had gotten that far, <laughs> and I want to congratulate uh, Maui um, Hemp Institute, and especially you, Steve, and uh, all those that been hanging in tight for the last few years, you know? And I know that uh, you guys struggle and all your challenges. I don't think your challenges are gone, and you'll have, uh, but look like that you've got uh, a way of going through those challenges with uh, government and local people. So. Again, congratulations to Thank the you. Maui Hemp Institute on research and sustainability and uh, working with Aloha Action, Leo Ryder, and uh, the local farmers. So I really think that's really great and exciting that you're going to be able to have a product that we don't have to send out. We can keep it for the people, uh, save us from getting uh, freight expenses, and uh, be able to not um, so much economics, but uh, more environmental and culture. Exactly. So I, you know, that, I think that's uh, really... Uh, Happy note for me to say, <laughs> environment, culture, and health. Well, yeah. thank you. And there's a lot more on our website, MauiHempInstitute.org. Everything we talked about is written out. We have a new website going up next week. We'll be starting our crowdfunding. We'd love people to join us as members and become involved. We're reaching out to the community. Join us, be on a committee. Uh, it's very low, you know, we want everybody to be Congratulations thank to you. Maui Hemp Institute. Mahalo. Aloha. This program is a joint production of the Kimo Keo Foundation, whose mission is to preserve and perpetuate Hawaii's unique culture, language, people, and environment. Information is online at kimokeo.org. And Maui Causes, a crowdfunded media production group supporting not-for-profit, progressive, and environmental causes in Maui County. Join us on the web at mauicauses.org.